Welcome to the House Doctor. Today I'm going to show you how to add a circuit to your breaker panel and put an outlet into the wall. Adding an outlet and putting a new circuit into your breaker panel is not that hard to do. There's just a couple of things you need to be cautious about. Let's get to it. This is the outlet box that I'm going to be using today. This one's a little bit different than what you find at the home centers. I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick these up. They're a little bit more expensive. I think it was about $2, but they're much easier to work with when you have to put some type of electrical device in a finished wall. Since this wall's so thick, a regular stud finder is not really going to work. That's why I normally just use one of these. It's a toddler lock, it's magnetic, and you run it along the wall until you find screw and then you're pretty sure you're going to have a stud there. Um, it'll just stick to the wall where the screw is. Take my jab saw and cut into the drywall to get it in the wall. The next thing we're going to do is take the cover off the panel. This is where you need to be really careful if you're not confident in your skills or you're not sure what you're doing. Maybe you should consider hiring an electrician. Once you take the screws off the panel and remove the cover, there are going to be live electrical components that could shock you. So be careful when you get to this part. Or you could shut off the main breaker if you want to, but that still doesn't make the panel 100% safe. I'll show you when I get the cover off. Right now, see this heavy copper bar with the um, zinc colored terminals on it? Those have electricity going to them right now. They're on either side. There's one here and there's one here and they run down and the breakers connect to them. All the way down here you'll see two nuts holding the main breaker onto those. They're called bus bars. These two wires here are the heavy wires that bring electricity into your home. Even if you shut off the main, there is still going to be electricity coming to these two terminals. There's no way to shut that off without removing the meter. I cut out a piece of the drywall above the breaker panel. There's no insulation at all in this stud bay. I'm in the attic above the garage and I know right below here is where that box is that we just cut out and I know where all these wires here are going down leads to the breaker panel so I'm going to need to drill a hole here to feed a wire to the outlet if this wall didn't have insulation in it I would probably just feed the wire down it'd be easy enough to get my hand in there and grab it but since it has insulation, I'm going to use these sticks. Um, they're called fish sticks or wire feeding sticks. I should be far enough down in there now. Let's go downstairs and see if we can grab a hold of this. Connect a wire to this and pull it up through. I'm not going to just feed a wire up from here to the attic. I'm also going to feed a piece of string because I need to have this outlet tie into other outlets that I've already installed. So I'm going to pull up a wire and a piece of string up to the attic, then tie the string off to the piece of wire that I need to pull back down through. We're just going to pull this up and that will bring the wire and the string with it. These wires are going down to the breaker panel and some of these holes are big enough that I can put another wire through. Um, save me the trouble of drilling and like I said, don't have to worry about banging into anything else. And you'll also notice that when we were back downstairs, I did put the cover back on the breaker panel. So that way as I'm feeding this wire down, I don't accidentally feed it right into the panel and cause some kind of problem. One more thing before I go back downstairs. This wire here goes to other outlets that I've already installed and wired up, but I'm going to feed them off of the outlet that we're installing. Take the wire, stick it through the hole with the string and hopefully I'll be able to go downstairs pull the string and bring this wire out with it. So far so good. The wire that I fed down for the panel is right here. It bunched up. I could pull
pull that out, no problem. That's plenty of wire to make the connections in the panel. Now, hopefully when I pull the string, it'll bring that other wire down, and that'll be just as easy. And there we have it. Now what's important from this point forward is that I keep track of these wires, especially since it's a GFCI outlet. Next step is to install our outlet box, the smart box. Just give yourself a couple of inches sticking out of the box and you should be just fine. The benefit of these boxes is you stick it into the wall, get it situated where you want it, and then there's two drywall screws that you can drive in at an angle, they'll go right into the stud. That's nice and secure, that box isn't going anywhere. On your GFC outlet on the back, one side or one end of it is going to be marked line. This is the set of terminals that gets the power and the other end of it is going to be marked load and that is the circuit that continues on from this GFCI that will be protected by this outlet. So I need to tie these two bare wires together and connect just one of them to the outlet. You should not just take the ground wires and twist them together. There should be some kind of mechanical device holding them together. You can get these green wire nuts that has a hole in the end of it. You can feed one of the wires all the way through it and then stick the other one in the big end where the threads are twist it together and that's a mechanical connection for the ground wires. The ground wire is going to slide right along this channel and go behind this metal plate here and when I tighten the green screw that's going to hold the ground wire. I'm going to take these two wires on this side that are coming from the panel and hook them up to the line at the top of the outlet. The black wire is going to go to the gold terminal and the white wire is going to go to the silver terminal. Okay, so now my line side is connected. Now I'll take the other two and hook them to the load side. All right, I have all the wires hooked up. Inside the panel, at the top and at the bottom, you're going to see a series of rings, different sizes. Those are called knockout holes. I need to punch out one of those holes to feed this wire down through into the panel so I can make the connections. Once I get the hole knocked out in the panel, I'm going to take one of these. It's called a non-metallic knockout plug. And that just means it's for use with non-metallic cables, which is normally what you're going to find in houses nowadays. And has a little nut on the back that unscrews. After you knock out the hole, you slide this in, put the nut on. Tighten it up, feed the wire through this end on the outside, and tighten up these two screws. That's nice and secure. Now I'll strip back the sheathing on this wire and feed it into the panel. Okay, when you're feeding these wires into the panel, you need to be very, very careful. Um, unless you shut the main off, then you only have to be very careful. Right. Wires are fed into the panel, haven't gotten shocked yet. Let's start connecting them. Before I connect the hot wire, I'm going to connect the ground and the neutral wire. And they're going to connect to a silver bus bar that's down here. I can connect them both to the same bus bar because this is a main panel, it's not a sub panel. On a sub panel, the ground and the neutral have to go to different bus bars. If you're unsure what that is, you probably shouldn't be doing this kind of work. You should probably get a licensed electrician to do it for you. I like to connect my wires to the breaker and then just clip the breaker onto the board. I find it a little bit easier. On this breaker, it uses either a square or a flat screwdriver to tighten the screw up. That's why I have one of these screwdrivers. It's a Klein 11 and one It's a really great screwdriver. Best thing about it is the Phillips bits never seem to strip out. I'll put a link in the description below along with all the other stuff where you can pick it up. It's good and secure. And you can see here a little hook on the back that hooks onto this metal here. And then these terminals here get pushed onto the hot bus bar. So you just clip this on here 
and then push the breaker in. Now we can test our circuit. Now that we have the power hooked up, I can see that my indicator light is off. And if I hit the test button, it trips the GFCI and the light comes on. And then I can just hit the reset button to reset the breaker. This outlet here is wired downstream or on the load side of that GFCI outlet I put in. So if I put the tester in here, I have the two orange lights, and if I hit the button, it trips the GFCI. So this outlet in the garage is also protected from that GFCI. I hope you found this video helpful and you'll hit the subscribe button, maybe even the notification bell. That way when I put out another video, you'll get notified that the video is there for you to watch. Maybe you'll hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. That helps you and me. It helps you because YouTube will send you other home improvement videos to watch, not just mine. And it helps me by letting me know if my video is any good or not and gets my video recommended to other people. Um, I have a few more things to button up, like tighten up those screws on the clamp up here, spackle this, put the panel cover on, but I'm not going to bore you with all that. Thanks for watching. You didn't run away just yet, did you? I forgot, before I put the panel cover back on, I have to bust off one of these tabs. You just grab it with a pair of pliers, twist it, a couple of times and that'll give you the slot for the breaker I just put in. Thanks again. Bye.